Greetings. I'm going to talk to you about spiritual warfare today, but first I would like to read a poem by uh, Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. It's a poem about a boy who's walking up a hill from village to village carrying a flag with a word on that flag, and he's determined to continue through this snow and rain and cold through day and night. He continues this journey in this very dangerous weather and he does not want to stop. He's warned and asked and pleaded, you know, stop and rest day overnight and he will not do it. He's just determined to push forward. Uh, the name of the poem is Excelsior and the very word Excelsior means higher. Let's see what happens to the boy as he tries climbing up the hill through village to village. <laughs> the shades of night were falling fast as through an alpine village passed a youth who bore mid snow and ice a banner with the strange device, Excelsior. His brow was sad, his eyes beneath flashed like a falchion from its sheath. And like a silver clarion rung, the accent of that unknown tongue, Excelsior. In happy homes he saw the light of households' fires gleam warm and bright. Above, the spectral glacier shone, and from his lips escaped a groan, Excelsior. Try not to pass, the old man said. Dark lowers the tempest overhead. The roaming torrent is deep and wide, and loud that clarion voice replied, Excelsior. O oh, stay, the maiden said, and rest the weary head upon this breast. A tear stood in his bright blue eye, but still he answered with a sigh, Excelsior. Beware the pine tree withered branch, beware the awful avalanche. This was the peasant's last good night, a voice replied far up the height. Excelsior. At break of day, as heavenward, the pious monks of St. Bernard uttered the oft-repeated prayer, a voice cried through the startled air, Excelsior. A traveler by the faithful hound, half buried in the snow was found, still grasping in his hand a vice, the banner with the strange device, Excelsior. There in the twilight, cold and gray, Lifeless but beautiful he lay, and from the sky, serene and far, a voice fell like a falling star, Excelsior. The boy pushing to move higher and higher, um, it ends up with death, very gloomy uh, poem. And we're going to come back to this later on in this message. But first, let's just talk about spiritual warfare a little bit. Um, first of all, we all feel like we're in a battle right now. Um, a lot of things happening that really we never dreamed would happen. And we look at, you know, anger at how, who's causing all this. And we need to remember who's the real enemy. Okay, St. Paul reminds us in his letter to the Ephesians, for our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, and against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realm. So let's focus on the spiritual. That's where the real battle is. And if you're going to get into spiritual warfare, we need to understand that there are certain rules of warfare that exist. See, Satan has to follow certain rules. God is creator. God created everything, including Satan, and Satan has to follow by rules. And yet Satan can twist these rules because Satan is a great deceiver. But Satan, according to one of the rules, he needs permission to act upon us. We hear about, you know, don't open a door and things like that because that's giving Satan permission to come into our life. And without giving Satan permission, if we just stay strongly bound to Jesus covered in his blood, Satan cannot get into us and harm us at all. But here's how Satan works, okay? Here's some rules here. First of all, ignorance is no excuse, okay? So you don't realize that, that this is Satan trying to enter, okay? Think, think of a mom who that's her child goes out and buys a Ouija board for her children to play with because she just thinks it's a little game. They're having fun. 
it's not a little game. It's a Ouija board's very spiritually dangerous um, device to have in your home. And this can bring spiritual problems into the home and onto the mother herself. And she's accountable, even though she may have not had a clue that there was anything wrong, just thought it was a little game. So ignorance is no excuse. Also, if you believe a lie, that's your problem. Okay, so Satan will lie, Satan will deceive. And just like Eve in the Garden of Ad and the Gar Eve in the Garden of Eden, okay, she believed the lie. She couldn't she's not off the hook. She's well it's not my fault he lied. No. She believed the lie. And if you believe the lie, you're still accountable. And the third one, this is an important one, silence equals consent. So Satan needs your approval and if you don't it's like it's like a kid who wants to approve wants the parents permission okay so uh, she waits till her mother is busy on the phone with some business meeting and worrying about uh, planning something and just all tied up with a million things and she just says oh I I want to go to the mall with my friends and the mother's so busy she doesn't answer so the kid goes later on what, what does the mother say? You went without my permission? And the kid says, no, I asked, and you, and you didn't say no. And that's how Satan operates. If you are silent and don't actively refuse, Satan takes that as consent, okay? Now, here's an example. Okay, like this, this AstraZeneca, it's, um, people think about taking this, and uh, you look at what the word means, okay? Astra. It's a Hindu word, means a weapon. Ze means, is Latin for that. Neka is death or kills, okay? Um, again, Latin. And so, right out in front of us, Satan has asked our permission to use this weapon that kills on us. And if we don't know what it means, we just say okay, and, and if we don't say no and accept it, Satan takes that as consent, okay? So... What does that mean? It means you have to work harder to try and know because these evil that's going on in our world and the people that are perpetrating all this, um, if you look closely, they're putting it all out in front of us ahead of time and we don't even see the signs because we don't know. If you, you, you look and see, you'll find out, okay? And now there's a program started by Andrew Cuomo, governor of New York, at least so far. Um, he wants to have a vaccine passport, which will be needed to, to go to any event or participate in any activity or go to a store. You need the vaccine passport, okay? And you'll see the vaccine passport. Um, it'll be like something that's, uh, for the time being, will be on your cell phone, and then it'll be scanned, and it'll tell you, did you have the vaccine? Have you had a test when does your vaccination expire when does your test expire and you'll carry that around with you and other people can put an app on their phone to read it so someone can say hold up your phone and they can check you oh you know you don't have vaccination or your vaccination expired and uh, the government can control you and they're talking about even taking it from the phone to including it more into part of your own body later on and this is a very dangerous thing and people might say well you know, no one warned us, we didn't know. Okay, well, guess what the name of the vaccine passport is? You will never believe it. It's called Excelsior. Remember the poem? How it, you know, they try and push forward. The more you try and push forward, it just ends up with death and disaster. Okay, this is the name of the vaccine passport. So we have been warned. Satan does that. He plays them games with us. You know, we're warned. But we don't know we're being warned unless we learn to look okay so with that i'm going to ask you to try to start looking more carefully at what's going on look for little signs and be careful and learn to know who your enemy is and that this enemy can't be trusted in any way okay and i'll end with a hopeful passage also from saint paul this time to the romans he says and we know that in all things god works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. And if you analyze that a little closer, I like to do this with this passage. Look at the key words. And we know. It doesn't say and we hope or and we think or, you know, and we, you know, kind of sort of believe it. It says and we know. 
and we know, and you need to act like that, act like you know it, you want, it's true, and we know that in all things, and here's the second key word, in all things, not in most things, or when things go my way, or in some things, but we know that in all things, even what seems to be things that are totally against what we would think are good, in all things God works for the good of those who love him, okay? God works for the good of those who love him. God will not work for the good of those who are aligned with Satan and, and uh, love evil. We say God loves everyone, but God doesn't work for the help the evil plans, okay? God will work to help and make things happen for those who love him and who are called according to his purpose. So if you believe that, live like you believe it, and never give up hope and always continue to pray and trust God and be alert to the deceptions that are all around you and don't fall for them. Okay, God bless you.